And welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This series is called Catching Up on Kaka'ako, and our title today for this uh, episode is uh, Environmental Considerations on Kaka'ako Makai. You know, most people know about a lot of the environmental considerations. We're talking about uh, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, rubbish under under the topsoil. We're talking about sea level rise. We're talking about extreme weather. We're talking about uh, toxins in that soil that could affect the uh, aquifer below. We're talking about a lot of environmental considerations. But here's a guy who knows more than most about those environmental <laughs> considerations, <laughs> and he's part of the uh, Democratic Environmental Caucus, Democratic Party, right here in Hawaii. Welcome to the show, Alan Burdick. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. I want to emphasize that this is not something that the caucus has formally uh, studied or taken a, a position on, but I'm speaking on the basis of uh, numerous uh, decisions and policy positions that we've taken over the course of several years. I've been with the Environmental Caucus since the very beginning, back in 2012, um, when we created the caucus. And uh, so I believe I speak generally uh, from where the uh, members of our caucus, who nominally number well over 5,000 uh, people, uh, are, are coming from with regard to this issue. Thank you. Well, environment is one of the most important issues in the state. I, I'll, I'll go on record by saying that. And it, it wraps around climate change. It wraps around extreme weather. It wraps around sea level rise. Uh, these are really important stories that every citizen ought to be aware of. And, and you know, good for you that you're on your co-chair of this, uh, uh, this committee, this caucus, um, and that you can speak with, with, you know, the experience you have. So let's talk about history first. Uh, can you give us a, a couple of minutes of the history of the the intersection between environmental issues uh, and development of residential, um, you know, high, sky uh, uh, high rise towers in Kaka'ako Makai? Okay, thanks. I um, I think we we can start actually back a bit further than than uh, the 2012 uh, legislative transfer of. Uh, these Kaka'ako Makai properties to uh, OHA, uh, which is what's generated the current situation. Uh, back in 2009, uh, it was a formal uh, environmental hazards evaluation that was done. It went on for 50 pages of text plus, who knows, 100 pages of appendix uh, that uh, recounted the history of this area as landfill and as formerly manufacturing areas and so on. And as you alluded to, Jay, uh, there's been a lot of um, environmental toxins uh, thrown into the ground there uh, by various manufacturing entities over the course of decades. You know, I had forgotten about that. You know, I've been living in this world of uh, it's a landfill, it's rubbish, there's all kinds of toxins emanating like the methane emanating out of the rubbish, but there's more, you're right. There were manufacturing facilities, auto, auto shops, uh, all kinds of manufacturing shops, which used toxic chemicals, which are in that ground. The EPA would be very interested and concerned and any EIS would, would have to study all that. It's beyond the trash. Maybe we should have named the show Beyond the Trash, Never mind. Go ahead, well, Alex. I got to tell you that uh, in my past life as a recovering, I'm now a recovering lawyer, but uh, back in my past li life, we had to deal with uh, a parcel in uh, Mapuna Puna, where uh, a company that shall remain nameless uh, went and bought a parcel of land that they wanted to work and then discovered because they didn't check on it. Uh, on the history of the use of the land, that there was a huge amount of um, toxic trash in the soil, and it cost them uh, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, uh, and some very expensive litigation uh, to uh, remediate this uh, un under uh, various federal statutes, including uh, RICRA and uh, Clean Water Act and others. So um, this is not something to be played with. And 
one of the concerns well, that you make you're... a very important point alan and that is the person who takes the transfer is sometimes responsible maybe often responsible for the cost of remediation even even when he had nothing to do with it exactly exactly you uh you get to stand in the shoes uh, pretty soggy and dirty shoes sometimes of your predecessor in interest on the land and uh you you're literally legally responsible for it all and uh, you know if you can go and and catch the person who sold the, the land to you and and get some sort of uh compensation you, you're lucky but um my for example my research on uh this particular uh legislative uh a uh, proposal which uh, turned out to be Act 15 in 2012 by the legislature uh, conveyed this these properties or I think seven or eight pro uh, parcels uh, to uh, OHA as is in in as is condition. So that's exactly the point. So OHA takes it subject to any problems and costs of remediation and this no warranties. Huge, no warranty, huge burden. It, and no one knows how much that will cost OHA. Exactly. That that's the that is the serious problem we're looking at right now. Uh, to uh, compress a long story into uh, a few sentences, uh, uh, OHA received this uh, property by a legislative transfer back in 2012 as uh, compensation purportedly for. Um, the uh, state's obligations to uh, the Hawaiian community from 1978, which is the date that of the last state constitutional convention during which OHA was created, uh, through to uh, some date in 2012 when the bill was enacted into law. Uh, and at the time, they uh, sort of uh, put a value on the properties as uh, $200 million. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the particular parcels that they are now trying to uh, deal with legislatively or the whole group of seven or eight parcels. Now, what's happened is basically this. Back in 2012, there were supposed to be two bills to go through the legislature. One was this transfer of property uh, bill, and the other was a deemed to be something of a companion bill to uh, lift um, development restrictions on two of the parcels among these seven uh, so as to allow uh, the parcels to be um, developed for high-rise uh, uh, supposedly affordable housing and and uh, that that's where the rub is right now because the legislature did not pass that second bill and OHA has gone back about three times now to the ledge, asking the legislature to please pass that companion bill so that the uh, so that OHA can go ahead and develop these properties. Uh, according to some uh, guesstimate, there uh, they may be making about a million dollars a year right now in ground rent, but they would expect that this would uh, increase to the range of. 14 or 15 million dollars a year if if and when they were able to uh, get these properties developed and put high rises in now it sounds like out. you're assuming that 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 additional money would be lease rent but um, if they sell fee then they take their money bags and and leave that's and the right standard approach these days is you you get a higher price if you sell fee um, and you get a developer in, maybe even transfer the development rights to a developer, uh, and the developer develops, um, sell it all out, and you, as the original owner, leave. You are not, you're no longer involved. You turn it all over to the board of directors uh, of that association of owners, and goodbye. And so it's yeah. one great, big, enormous check. Um, but that does not help affordable housing very much, does it? Nor, nor does it address the uh, federal environmental protection laws because the feds can still go back after OHA and theoretically back against the state for 
uh, uh, the the toxins that are in those uh, in those soils. I don't. What, what I don't about know the that, owners who bought? What about the person as, that purchased as well? It? As well, everybody's going to be on the hook. Um, and uh, the, there's that is the really serious problem that is not being directly addressed by the legislation that's gone uh, been introduced in the legislature. Uh, there was uh, a pair of bills in 2014, and then another try in 2022, just a year ago, uh, I think even 2021. Uh, and uh, I'm expecting that there's going to be another try this year. And there is another try this year, Alan. Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. So, so let's talk about the environmental issues um, surrounding that project, such as it is, uh, the tutative project. Uh, and Kaka'ako Makai in general, this is not ordinary land. It is not an ordinary location. It, it is a special place environmentally. What, what, what makes it special? Well, part of it has to do with the fact that it's fill. Um, the uh, fill put in to uh, um, extend the, 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 the land uh, into uh, shallow waters, uh, near shore waters to um, make more land which of course is a uh ordinarily a good thing here in hawaii right um and uh i i want to mention that as far as the environmental caucus is concerned we believe in uh interpreting the the concept of environmental issues rather broadly to include it aspects of the human environment that are not necessarily specifically related to um toxins in the soil or uh, fish or birds or uh, any, uh, you know, um, wildlife of any sort. I mean, certainly those are incorporated in what we're concerned about, but we're also looking at the human environment and what, uh, you know, what we are creating uh, in terms of uh, a life for future generations. And that is indeed the area where um, people in Kaka'ako have been really furious uh, for a long, long time about this. Um, they object, uh, the vast majority of them object very uh, vehemently to the idea of uh, one of the specific requests of OHA is to uh, expand the height limit to 400 feet for each of uh, an anticipated two uh, I think I think two high rises at this point, but who knows? When the architects get to it, they might decide they can squeeze in a third one. Who knows? Uh, so, um, 400 feet, 40, uh, 40 floors uh, is is the idea, and uh, this gets uh, people rather unhappy because uh, these, as Mackay properties, they're right on the shoreline, which means they're going to block somebody's ocean view and uh, so many people's ocean view. There's also a concern that um, Kaka'ako is all, uh, you know, already facing uh, an influx of uh, a lot of uh, new residents. Uh, as you drive by on Ala Moana Boulevard, you see all these new uh, buildings going up, and a lot of them are very expensive looking uh, apartments. Um, and so there, there's a concern that uh, uh, unless uh, people are able to preserve uh, some of this land as park land, uh, there's the uh, there's going to be a serious problem of simply uh, excessive overbuilding and uh, urbanization of that area. Uh, now, how that's all going to work out in detail, I certainly don't know. But that, but that is a part of the environmental examination of Kaka'ako, uh, how much green grass is left over. You know, it, it, right. it, I think it struck all of us when Kaka'ako first uh, went into its uh, high-speed mode in, in the aught years, and all these permits were being given for these big, tall buildings. And although the renderings showed a tree here and a tree there and a little walkway and a Chinzano umbrella, uh, all, those, all those happy things, fact is that didn't happen. Um, the right. fact is that there are no additional parks in all of Kaka'ako, uh, that the, the setbacks are minimal, 
and the escarpments as you walk on the step back is like 40, 40 feet high, and there ain't no humanity there. I'll, I'll go on record. There ain't no, no humanity right. there. Well, we're agreed, certainly agreed on that. Yeah. The, uh, and uh, in reviewing the testimony of uh, that was offered in uh, some of these bills, uh, you can see that uh, very uh, the, the key problem is that we have a very uh, clear line of uh, disagreement between the people who live in Kaka'ako on the one hand and the Hawaiian community on the other. The Hawaiian community is more than anxious uh, to uh, see OHA uh, get some work done here, uh, possibly in terms of actually directly pro providing uh, housing for Hawaiians, or at least developing the property, getting to, and uh, getting a bundle of money out of it and using it elsewhere. Um, and um, it's, it's there's hard a great to tell. divide in the Native Hawaiian community. There are Pardon me? many Native Hawaiian uh, Native Hawaiians who don't support this residential uh, uh, high rise at all. Yeah, certainly. Uh, as I say, it, it's a it's a general line of of disagreement, and you'll find people who might presumably you might presuppose are going to be on one side, actually being on the other. But uh, but uh, Kaka'ako residents, uh, I didn't see a single piece of testimony in my review of this situation over uh, in these three sets of bills. Um, any Kaka'ako resident who really supported um, uh, the development and uh, it's very, very fierce opposition uh, to what's going on. And I think we're going to be facing another round of uh, of those kinds of arguments uh, uh, in this new year with this new legislative session, uh, wouldn't be surprised. Oh, uh, so have you have you looked at the sea level rise and the intersection um, of the sea level rise and the toxins in the soil uh, from from the uh, rubbish and also from the manufacturing you mentioned? Because when you put them together. And then you drop them down uh, to the level of the uh, of the water, uh, the water source, uh, the aquifer down there. Uh, you get you get a, a kind of a red hill effect. That's right. And one point to make uh, to the audience who may not be aware of it: uh, Oahu has one aquifer. The red hill aquifer is the Kaka'ako aquifer, and even the uh, windward side uh, water sources are part of the same aquifer. Uh, they all intersect. And, um, you know, you can't say, well, that's the other guy's water source problem. No, it's, uh, it's the entire island. Uh, it may take a little while for uh, toxins in Kaka'ako uh, to get over to the windward side, for example, or out uh, into the uh, IAEA Pearl City and and uh, the general Pearl Harbor area, but they travel. And as you point out, uh, sea level rise is is the way to uh, uh, put more of those toxins uh, in, into um, into circulation that may have been may be sitting and may have been sitting for a few decades relatively undisturbed at the present time, but uh, with sea level rise, we can expect that there will be some migration. And we got a lot of heavy metals and um, all these other fluoro this and fluoro that, uh, that we learn about when we hear about what's going on over at Red Hill with the, uh, with the fire suppressant materials. All of those kinds of horrible, uh, chemical uh, combinations uh, it, it seem to exist over uh, in the Kaka'ako area. And one of the things that I found rather dismaying in reviewing the, uh, the testimony, uh, and, and I went through oh, a couple hundred pieces of testimony in the last few days uh, reviewing this, is that there's hardly a peep in the testimony, even in the opposition, 
that raises issues about the uh, uh, environmental toxins and and the dangers, the physical uh, dangers of these toxins. And nobody's saying, "Hey, bring the feds in and uh, tell OHA they can't do this." Well, uh, that's very interesting because we talked about uh, the EPA. Um, this would be a, a field day for the EPA. I mean, such as that case you mentioned in Mapuna Puna. You know, it's there, and it's and the EPA is interested in that sort of thing. Um, but the other the other element is this: the Hawaii Environmental Protection Act triggers an EIS when you have state land uh, or a state agency, and and uh, you have in this case both of them. You have the state land, then you have uh, OHA, which is un unquestionably a state agency. That's how it. That's, that's it. right. That's what it is. Sometimes mm -hmm. they say they're not, but depending on who the particular trustee might be. But uh, yeah, that's right. Um, and uh, ac actually, there's a sort of an oddball um, thing that only attorneys get crazy about is uh, there's an argument by the attorney general that uh, uh, legislation to um, raise the height limits, for example, or otherwise uh, make it easier for OHA to develop these properties uh, would violate a particular provision in the state constitution that uh, doesn't allow for uh, special legislation. In other words, legislation that the state um, enacts uh, is supposed to be of general application. And uh, I'm not 100% sure I agree with the attorney general's opinion on it, but I'm not the attorney general. Well, let me let me offer this thought that um, if if this legislation named OHA per se, then clearly it would be a special legislation for the benefit of a single party or an identifiable party, and it would be a violation of the state constitution. It could very, there, very well be. There yeah. is law that allows the extension of that notion, uh, sort of in the nature of innuendo. If you take all the facts and circumstances and you see there's only one party asking um, for this legislation, one party seeking, you know, a 400 foot limit, and it's all panoply through the press and through the public conversation. Uh, I, I don't think there's really any issue, but that by virtue of that innuendo, it is special legislation. In fact, uh, you know, there may be issues around the way that the attorney general framed the opinion back when. But there's a substantial issue of a violation of the oh, Constitution. Yeah. That's right. Uh, th this uh, criticism uh, was raised, um, I think, as far back as 2012. Uh, but, um, you know, OHA went forward with it. You know, I, um, particularly as we're getting uh, close to our time limit here, I wanted to say that uh, there is language in a number of the testimonies. And it's certainly my view that. We need to bail OHA out of this if they're willing to do it. And I think that this is this is where we have to focus. How can we fix this problem? I'm hopeful that OHA is not too invested financially, psychologically, politically, uh, or however, um, in uh, pursuing the approach that they've been doing for the last literally 10 years. And that is to try to build these monstrous uh, high rises uh, on two or possibly more of the parcels they've got uh, and recognize that it's not at all popular with uh, the neighborhood. And uh, the state needs to recognize that OHA didn't get quite the deal it should have gotten. Uh, some people blame OHA and say they didn't do due diligence. On the other hand, I think it could be said that OHA was relying on that companion bill uh, being approved in a timely manner when it has never been approved. And uh, therefore, they feel that they didn't get the package that they uh, they thought they were going to get and that uh, they really should uh, be able to uh, rescind uh, uh, this deal and find a, uh, another deal that's better. There are other areas um, in urban Honolulu where they might be able to get some land or 
maybe the state can transfer cash and um, OHA might be able to find uh, some areas, perhaps in the Kalihi area. Uh, I'm not sure where, and I'm not trying to um, point my finger no, at it. I'd like to offer place. some thoughts about all of that. Number one is recently in the paper, there was news of a, 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 a permit being issued on a very tall 30 story, 30 plus story uh, uh, high rise condo in uh, Moili Ili which has needed the development for a long time. And it's an old neighborhood uh, and, yeah. and it could happen there. Uh, number two is that, um, you know, people of a lot of people, planners, architects, engineers have seen Kalihi as the successor um, to Kaka'ako Makai, Amauka. They've seen it as the successor to Kaka'ako Mauka, which means that it, it needs development. It's ripe for development. It's the next logical step of, of developing a what they call a residential bedroom community around downtown. So right. that, you know, there's got to be some state land in there. But as you say, it doesn't have to be state land. You, you, right. can, you can provide the funds and OHA can spend the money and uh, get into a property that doesn't have uh, all these uh, tremendous considerations. So right. if you were addressing OHA on this, and I realized that they're advertising this project right now. I was listening to an ad on KHPR the other day, and I, I was amazed to find that they do not have the legal right to do this. There is substantial opposition to this project, and yet they are advertising the sales of units. Incredible. Um, and not even talking about the problems. I find that really extraordinary. But I'm only saying this because you, you said that they may or may not be invested. I think they're invested in the public eye they are they are publicizing this even when they can't do it <clears throat> but the my point i make though is that assuming they were rational and not invested to the point where they're shooting themselves in the foot um what would you say to them what advice would you give them as to the path now to follow i would say that uh, what they ought to do is uh avoid a blame game and um sit down with uh, the governor and uh, legislative leaders and see uh, if there is a mutually satisfactory way for everybody to get out from under this. Uh, I, you know, it's, it's not just the Hawaiian community that loses if OHA uh, is unable to do anything with this property and by doing anything i include the idea of giving it back to the state in exchange for money that they can use elsewhere uh it hurts everybody not just hawaiian and uh you know we we need to give oha the support in that sense to um uh to say look we're not blaming you uh and let's just fix a problem that's there um, and move on uh, and, and try to uh, create an alternative that will be, be beneficial to the Hawaiian community and to the people of Oahu and Honolulu uh, in general uh, as well and, and uh, put this past them. Uh, I think this was a mistake uh, uh, and um, I think anybody objectively looking at it will say it's a mistake. I know the people of Kaka'aka will, uh, and, but we need, uh, we, we shouldn't just punish OHA. Uh, we need to do something that supports OHA in this respect as well. But they got to be willing to recognize that and be willing to back out of that ditch that they're in right now with this property and, and look for a different alternative. And we certainly would support that. Well, and so there's a lot of wisdom and and uh, and heart and tono what you say. I'm, I uh, really appreciate the thoughtfulness of your position on that. Uh, but you. let me ask you one last question. Okay? Sure. So there you are in front of a committee, whether this gets to a committee hearing or not remains to be seen um, on this legislation that has been introduced. And it begins this way. <clears throat> My name is Alan Burdick. May it please the committee, I would like to offer some advice to this committee 
as to whether or not <laughs> they should pass this legislation. I, uh, I, I put it in terms of suggestion rather than advice, uh, choice of words there, but uh, I certainly would urge the committee to uh, assist OHA and everybody back out of uh, what's turned out to be a dead end and um, or or one that if not a dead end is going to uh, bruise and hurt a whole lot of people and uh, the Kaka'ako community if they push forward with this uh, as they seem to be doing right now. Uh, I think it's uh, got to find another solution and uh, the sooner that everybody can agree that it needs to be done, the relatively easier it's going to be. It's going to be a big nut to crack in any event because we're looking at a couple of hundred million dollars at least and trying to help OHA figure out where to put that money, uh, which of course will be their uh, considered judgment. I hope that, uh, you know, there'll be fewer misunderstandings in any future transaction. With the due regard that the law requires an EIS, which hasn't actually happened, and yeah. which would be a very complex EIS because of all of the huge environmental risks and considerations involved. Uh, when the question comes between you and the committee, and somebody says to you, uh, Mr. Burdick, thank you very much. However, the, the question before this house is, house literally, perhaps, <laughs> The question before the House is, should we pass this bill out or not? What's your answer? Well, it would depend on the bill. But if, if it were a bill to basically give everybody a mulligan here and say, OK, we'll take back the land or some parcels out of the seven and then refund uh, with a dollar amount that people can agree on, I would certainly uh, support it. And the poser was a bill to a bill to repeal the restriction on residential development in Kaka'ako Makai and uh, to raise the, uh, I was going to say debt ceiling, <laughs> and, to, and to raise the height limit uh, to 400 feet. Well, uh, I, suppose uh, it was that bill. Oh, absolutely. Uh, if we were to get involved in it, uh, I, I'm rather sure that we would uh, oppose such a bill because of the strong community opposition and uh, from an environmental, uh, strictly environmental perspective, it would um, uh, it would create too many uh, environmental problems uh, that people down the line, uh, many of whom wouldn't know what's going on, uh, would uh, would wind up suffering from. And, and uh, we would uh, I'm rather sure uh, not be happy with a 400 foot uh, limit in Kakako. And I think the FAA may have a problem with that as well mm. because of the airport. Yes, you're right. It's not far from, from the reef runway, is it? That's yeah, right. I hadn't thought of that. Alan Burdick, um, the co chair of the Environmental Caucus, Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Uh, and who has been thinking about this, involved in this for many years. Thank you very much for your thoughts on Kaka'ako Makai and the development for a residential high rise. Thank you so I much. I thank you for the opportunity to uh, offer my thoughts. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.